just go ahead and join the dark side. Just go ahead and join the dark side. Alright, welcome back for uh, part two of episode four, uh, Red Moon Saloon. Getting all loose up in here. Uh, we're going to be talking about some general PvP, the different level, uh, item level uh, PvP sets, and just like level 50 PvP sets. You know, what do you, what do you got to do to get them, and how you get them, and you know, like that. What you got on this, Kendo? Krazy? I'm about to tell you what I got on this. I'm about to tell you right now. And it's about being formative. No, uh, PvP gear, uh, there's a, um, there's vendors in your, uh, main hub for, uh, Empire. It is the, uh, Viking Spice, Space Dock. <laughs> Spice Dock? <laughs> Spice Dock. I'm not buying oregano, <laughs> motherfucker. We're buying fucking <laughs> PvP gear. Yeah, I've had a couple few beers. But, um, anyways, uh, You'll notice uh, there's a PvP vendor, and he sells level 20 and level 40 uh, PvP gear. Um, I personally, I saved up all my... Oh, these are bought with Warzone combinations, by the way. I saved up my Warzone combinations while I was leveling, and uh, I bought a full level 40 set. I was buying them before I was level 40. So it's really nice, and I highly recommend somebody do that. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll probably do the same thing, most likely... Uh It'll probably be most beneficial to buy one at 40 rather than 20. So all you people that are wasting on level 20 stuff, uh, you guys are scrubs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But it'd probably be more wise. I don't know. Yeah, level 20, I wouldn't say. Because the level 20 stuff is worth the same amount of war zone combinations as level 40. And I wouldn't really recommend spending your combinations on level 20 gear because, I mean, the 20s, they don't go by fast. But you'll, you'll out-level... The level 20 stuff pretty quickly so i would just save up start buying the level 40 stuff mm -hmm. there's also a pvp weapons vendor that you'll see was that about every four levels or something like that or? yeah i think so every every four levels i do believe you can buy new weapons uh you can even buy weapons for your companions they're blue or orange gear and of course we know that orange gear you can take out the damage uh mod the main mod and you can replace it with other of the main, main mods so that you can level the weapon up with you if that's the path you want to go. Which is really nice because, you know, I like getting a weapon and, you know, it, it always sucks when you replace it. You're like, oh, man, it's a really nice weapon here in, like, ten levels. It'll be obsolete, which it, it gives you another, you know, you know, another l outlet to, you know, go that route, So which is really nice. Yeah, for uh, and especially if you find, like, a piece of gear that you think looks really cool and you're just not ready to get rid of it yet you can always upgrade it if it's orange you can upgrade the main stat to it armor if it's a if it's a armor piece or the damage piece if it's a weapon piece but like i said that's only for the orange gear which is the same as blue gear uh level wise uh there's been some some confusion purple gear is better than orange gear always and purple gear is not customizable to that extent but uh the other thing that I want to talk about is the level 50 PvP gear. There's three tiers to it. Um, I'm not sure which one comes first, but I do know how to get one of the tiers, and that is at the PvP items vendor for 200 Warzone combinations and for 200 Mercenary combinations. Yep. You can buy a level 50 purple uh, PvP loot bag. That has a chance of dropping a token that you can turn in for, I do believe, the Battlemaster gear. It might be the Centurion gear. I'm not sure. I'm not clear on that yet. I haven't been in-game, you know, a whole lot. But I'm pretty sure it's one of those two. Like, can't be far off from, you know, one of them. It's either one or the other, so. Well, I'm going to find out before our next episode because I'm level 44 now. So, I will definitely be level 50 before the next episode. And in case anybody's wondering the difference between Warzone combinations and uh, Mercenary combinations, Warzone combinations are obviously you get those from doing Warzones. The Mercenary combinations you can get from doing the world PvP areas like uh, the Smuggler's Den and uh, Alderaan Lake. Right, right. Or you can turn in 30 Warzone combinations for 10 Mercenary combinations. They let, they let you upgrade. Probably you broke bitches out there. Yeah, so you don't have to do world PvP if you don't want to. 
And uh, so uh, you could probably hear uh, Gucci's dog in the background there. Rocky. Yeah, she's uh, yeah. Give me a second. I'll go kick her here. <laughs> go go beat her up a little bit. No, he doesn't beat his dog. But uh, just my women. Yeah, just just his women. And uh, that's what we do. I mean, we drink beers and we beat women and we play Star Wars. <laughs> so <laughs> not really. We're just joking. We we never really even. We're gonna ed- we're gonna edit that part out, right? Yeah, we're gonna edit that part out. Yeah, maybe we'll see. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah. How, how much time do we got left in? Oh, uh, we got about thirty seconds. So let's uh, let's try and wrap it up here. Yeah, let's wrap it up on the PVP gear. We're gonna be talking about crafting gear next, uh, and the crafting prese- uh, professions. Uh, I got a lot I would like to say about that. But, uh, yeah, for the PvP gear, the expertise uh, that increases your damage to players, increases your healing to players, decreases damage taken by players. That's only on the level 50 stuff. So that's the last thing I have to say. Yep, uh, get your level up. Get that level 50 stuff. You are a man. Greetings bootleg radio listeners, and Old Republic followers. Are you sick of those fan sites out there that are way too optimistic? Do you want truly unbiased opinions to all the hot topics of the Old Republic? Then join me, CR91, while I take on topics like... What's up with gay romance? Will the Old Republic kill Warcraft? Is the collector's edition worth the cash? Does your wife think I'm better in bed? Find answers to all these questions and more, during Nothing Gaming Zone hit video series, Blockade Runner. Log on to nothinggaming.com and find out. Before it's too late. Hey, I was just talking about you. Welcome back to the Red Moon Saloon. Uh, we're going to be talking here on the last part about crafting, um, some of the crew member skills, and uh, what crafting um, professions we went with in uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. Uh, got any insight on that there, Krazi? Uh Yeah, I have a few things that I would like to talk about. Um, first off, uh, what, cra- what crafting did you go with, Gooch? Um, actually, I went with uh, sy- synth weaving, um, archaeology, and underworld training. Uh, trading, not training. Um, <laughs> I, I like them a lot. Um, I'm, I want to build some lightsabers, things like that. I like the fact that I can send my crew member out. Whoa, you can't build lightsabers with synth weaving. You're, you're doing armor. I think I think artificing's. Yeah, I got it confused with uh, archaeology. <laughs> but uh, anyway, regardless, I like I like the fact that I can send my crew member out, gather supplies, and then I can also send. Uh, the same crew member out to craft supplies and things of that nature. Um, I think it's a pretty cool feature that so, uh, Sotor adopted there. Um, I spent many hours in other MMOs farming and farming and farming, and uh, shit kind of gets repetitive, kind of gets boring. Yeah. I think it's an. I like the new feature how they uh, how they took on their idea for the whole uh, crafting and things of that nature. Well, I took uh, cyber tech uh, scavenging and slicing and there's a a few things that i want to talk about one is uh slicing is op if anybody has slicing then you probably know what i'm talking about tons Uh, of money tons of money tons of money yeah i uh i maxed out slicing recently and uh i actually uh i started recording like uh how much money it costs to send my uh, companions on slicing missions and how much money i get from it and uh i did just uh well, right now I'm level 44, and I can send four companions out at a time. And uh, I recorded five each. And at level 40, they're like uh, 20 minutes, half hour long missions. And so that's two and a half hours. And roughly in two and a half hours, I made about uh, 15,000 credits just from sending my companions on missions. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's going to get nerfed. I know it's going to get nerfed. So if anybody has slicing out there... Uh, yeah, just do it as much as you can. Send them on lockbox quest, quest, lockbox quest. Oh my god, I can't talk. I've had a couple too many beers. Yeah, uh, the one thing I hate about slicing is like um, 
you get way too much money it, it kind of lets everybody like everybody obviously is going to be slicing because they know that you know you get m mad dough off of it and on top of that it's like if everybody's getting like crazy money from slicing like the prices on you know all the trade items are going to be inflated because everybody's got tons of money so it, and in the long run it kind of just like messes up the whole world you know like in-game currency like the whole you know kind of sucks but hopefully they fix it so yeah i don't want to see anything end up like uh if anybody's uh remembers if anybody's as old as i am well i'm not really that old i'm only going to be 25 but uh i remember Diablo 2 the gold currency in Diablo 2 was so worthless that people actually traded with uh sojs which was a ring is that, staff of jordan or wait no no stone of jordan stone of jordan yeah that's yeah. what they use as a currency because the gold was meaningless so i hope it doesn't end up like that it's like because it, yeah i just broke one million credits that's ridiculous like one million credits I one just game broke. or one week in the launch and you got a million credits and i'm sure there's people that got more than a million credits so it's like oh yeah that's ridiculous like there's i mean depending i don't know they i've might, been buying and the way that the Galactic Trade Network works is if you put an item up there, it suggests a price for you already. So many people go with that. And, like, literally, like, I haven't been just scrolling all my money away. Like, like every five levels, I'll look on the Galactic Trade Market. I'll buy, like, purples. I'll buy blues every once in a while. And it's chump changed me. Like, a purple level 40 is, like, like 17,000 credits. What's that to me? I got a million credits. Like, <laughs> I just blow money. Yeah, but, uh, I'm talking big cheese, Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who gives a f about that? But uh, aside from uh, slicing, the other thing I want to talk about is uh, scavenging and underworld trading. Uh, they're both, both very important uh, crew skills because they both have one thing in common. They tie into three crafting pro uh, professions. No other uh, gathering skills tie into three like that. Underworld trading is really nice because um, the things that you can get from underworld trading uh, is these little blue things. Uh, they're called different things. I can't remember off the top of the head what they're called. But you use them in crafting possessions, professions to make the blue quality items or purple quality items. Right. And it ties into three. So underworld trading is uh, very profitable. What are your thoughts on that, Gooch? Uh, I think I agree with that. Uh I also have underworld uh, trading. Haven't really got into it a whole lot, but I'll take your word for it. But I mean, seems like it's a pretty profitable, uh, you know, profession or whatever you want to call it. Let's talk about reverse engineering. How much time we got left, Gooch? Uh, about thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. That's it. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going uh, seven minutes on this one, right? Okay, we got a minute left. Okay. Well, uh, and. Uh, Reverse engineering, what happens is uh, when you make your materials, you are uh, <laughs> making me laugh. I'm sorry. I was just doing the animations of uh, uh, <laughs> different en enablers, we'll call them. <laughs> but anyways, uh, when you're reverse engineering stuff, the things that you craft or if you get items that you can craft, you uh, click your reverse engineering in your uh, inventory window. It's at the very top. And then you right-click the items, and you reverse engineer them, and you, ha you have a chance to get up to half of the materials that you use to craft the item back. Sometimes you get less. But anyways, you have a chance to discover the blue recipe for a green item. And then if you make enough blues and reverse engineer the blue quality, then you have a chance to discover the purple quality. And that's the real good stuff that we want to, everybody's striving to get. The purple stuff is the good stuff. So, uh, yeah, lesson be learned there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's all I got. Uh, scavenging and underworld trading both playing a lot. So those are great uh, for making profit on the global trade market. And uh, if you have slicing, use it as much as you can. Lots of money. So uh, that's it for us for this uh, fourth week. Uh, so that's all we got. Anything else there, Krause? Uh No, I'm looking forward to getting back in the game, getting 50, and we will keep you guys updated uh, next week with Episode 5. And uh, just remember that herpes is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs>